While I was away, there were some absolutely amazing developments in the saga of the Young Turks versus Jimmy Dore, and I thought that the next chapter in this saga would be me covering the whole Kyle Kalinske thing. However, and I do mean however, there was an even better development because now Cenk Uger, founder of the Young Turks, has decided to go after Glenn Greenwald. Now, we probably will do the Kyle Kalinske thing later on. Let me know if that's something you guys are interested in by smashing the like button. If this video gets to an arbitrary number of likes that I'm not going to tell you, I'll definitely do that. But for now, we're going to handle this crisis between the Young Turks and Jimmy Dore like all crises should be handled. And speaking of crisis and emergency, and did you say food, we gotta talk about more sponsor. Friends, it seems like big government and tech giants are trying to destroy America. Everything they touch seems to end in disaster. Pretty soon, the whole system will fall apart, and the first thing that goes down in a crisis is the food system. Do you have enough emergency food for a crisis where the grocery shelves are empty? Most people don't, and that's why they panic when a crisis happens. The smart move is to lock in your emergency food supply right now. This is why I strongly recommend you guys head over to My Patriot Supply. They have over 41,000 4 and 5 star reviews, and that's because their products are excellent. And right now, since their mission is your survival, they're giving discounts as high as 25%. Go to preparewithajw.com, my special affiliate link in the pinned comment and in the top of the description, and order yourself an emergency food supply starter kit for you and everyone in your family or everyone that you care about. Again, that's preparewithajw.com where you can get your emergency supply at an excellent price. So we last left this amazing, unbelievable saga between the Young Turks and Jimmy Dore, with Anna Kasparian unleashing her blackmail attack on Jimmy Dore, accusing him of being a sexual harasser, and Jimmy Dore rebutting those accusations, and most of the online left, not all, but most, taking the side of Jimmy Dore. However, lost in the weeds in this whole situation was a specific lefty that Jenk really admired who decided to take the side of Jimmy Dore, and of course, that was Glenn Greenwald. Now, I find this unbelievably amusing that Glenn Greenwald has taken Jimmy Dore's side from a further left position against Jenk Uger, because Glenn, Jank, and Jimmy were among the three that teamed up to kick Sam Harris out of the left over nonsensical reasons years ago. So you could tell by this nearly 30 minute video put out by Jank that this really got under his skin because he thought Glenn and Jimmy were on the same side. We talk about that all the time is what Jank used to say when they were talking up ways to smear Sam Harris and quote mine him to death in order to kick him out the left. So now that Jank's on the other side of this, this really bothers them because they used to lie together. But you know what they say about lying with dogs? You'll get rabies if one of those dogs comes up and bites you. I don't know that analogy very well. Let's get into the clip. So guys, we're gonna do a bonus episode here uh, about Glenn Greenwald's attack on Anna. Uh, it was vicious and it was completely false. Uh, and I'm gonna prove it to you guys. I'm gonna show you the tapes. So quick question. Do you think, place your bets now in the comments of this video or in the live chat, that Cenk Uger is going to prove something that Glenn Greenwald said was false throughout the course of this video. Not the whole entire Glenn Greenwald video, but one thing that Glenn Greenwald stated as a fact, do you think it will be proven false by Cenk Uger in this video? I have my doubts, I have my reservations. I've seen how Cenk brings down information or brings up information in order to dispute his opponents, and it's not very good. I think this is gonna be a smear thing, and that's not only because I just saw this, and I saw somebody else do a video on this, but because I know Cenk and I didn't have to see it or see somebody else do a video on this. Really disappointing and sad to see because Glenn, uh, I thought, was a real journalist. And we've praised him on the show many times. Uh, and he did some amazing stories in the past, uh, including, of course, the uh, Edward Stone story. And I think Edward Stone's an American hero. Uh, it's a great story about Brazil. But after watching this, I was further heartbroken because I think... Now I'm not really sure about any of his past stories. Did he hide evidence on purpose in all of those? I don't know. There's no way of knowing because of what you're about to see. So of course, leading off in the first inning, Cenk Uger, why is there a leadoff hitter who's clearly the slowest man in America? Who knows? And he decides to go with the smear of Glenn Greenwald, saying he doesn't know, even though he believes Snowden is a hero, which is based on the reporting from Glenn Greenwald, whether or not Glenn Greenwald's stories past, present, and future should be trusted based on him hiding evidence in this. And what evidence did Glenn Greenwald hide? 
We shall find out. Right. And it should be noted, we're doing this in the bonus episode because we do an actual news program. Uh, we do tons of stories every day about things that matter in the world. I'm gonna go with false on that. False that the Young Turks is an actual news show. You guys are smear merchants, you smear people. The problem you're having now is normally you smear somebody on the right that your audience isn't familiar with. And unfortunately for you, Jimmy Dore is somebody that your audience is familiar with. So your smears against him are hurting you as well as his smears against you are also hurting you. Look at the like to dislike ratio. And remember, YouTube has a new system where if you barely watch a video and you hit dislike, like you go over to dislike bomb it, YouTube will remove some, if not all of those dislikes. So this dislike ratio is actually worse for the Young Turks than is actually indicated. Uh, now this revolves around uh, Jimmy Dore's claim that Anna tried to blackmail him with a DM that she sent him. So now Jimmy sexually harassed Anna while she was here and that was all uncovered through this whole process. Now you're gonna see that with your own eyes in a second, but I need you to know that context so when Anna says, and, and at that point, the, Anna sends the DM when Jimmy's already attacking her personally. And by the way, we're gonna show you a clip of that later as well. So you'll see that evidence. So what's great about this, and this is my overall hypothesis, is that Jenk was not expecting Anna Kasparian to send the direct message that she did send to Jimmy Dore. So Jenk can't really defend it because it is in fact blackmail. And you could tell he's struggling because he's basically a father figure to Anna Kasparian. He brought Jimmy Dore into the world of progressive media, or at least boosted him up with his network. And now Anna, who went out on a line for him and the Young Turks network, did such an embarrassing bad move behind Jenk's back, he can't throw her under the bus because she's half the Young Turks, so he's trying desperately to find something to defend her with. Now what's great about this is Jenk's defense is the most technical, weaselly, and untrue defense you could possibly have because the charges are clear and obviously accurate. So in the midst of that frustration, Anna sends a DM, and now they've characterized it as blackmail, and I wanna actually read the end of that DM for you guys so you know what the reality is, right? And it's in there, they've all put it in their videos, they read it to you guys, and then they tell you something that isn't true. So let's read the, the end of that DM. She says, I've been holding back, um, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some sort of warrior for what's good in the world. That is going to change. So what is great about that is Jenk is not hiding information. He's about to accuse Jimmy Dore later in this video of hiding the absolute most important information. Yet Jenk decided to put the text of the DM in a text graphic rather than show you the direct message. Because if you read the whole direct message, you would see that it was in fact blackmail. Now, Jenk's gonna dodge and ding or whatever in order to get out of this, but we're gonna read the actual DM so you guys can get an understanding of what I'm saying. I'm sure you remember when you constantly made inappropriate comments about how sexy you found me at work and even felt the need to ask me where I shop for my jeans so you could buy a pair for your wife. So she dresses better. That was followed by an apology card you wrote me for the degrading harassment. I've been holding back, letting you run your mouth nonstop as if you're some kind of warrior for what's good in the world, that's going to change. That is the full context as shown in the video by Jimmy Dore, and since there's a message from Anna from 2016 right before that, I am tempted to believe that that is the actual context of the message. I'm sharing it with you because the Young Turks, and specifically Jank here, are trying to hide the overall implication of the message, even though it's obvious. Now. In blackmail, the way that it works is, hey, uh, I'm going to do something unless you give me something. You give me a duffel bag full of money in a parking lot, or, or you do this, or you do that, or you don't do something. It's an ultimatum, right? Here, there's no ultimatum. She says, I'm gonna do it, right? You can, there's no like, oh, okay, maybe not, maybe this. If you do this, then I won't do that. No, she says, I'm mad because you are pretending to be a warrior for good when I re when in reality, I know because of my personal experience that you're a dirtbag. So I'm gonna let people know you're a dirtbag because that's who you are because you're going out there and attacking me personally. This has nothing to do with politics anymore. You're saying I'm paid off by nefarious people, all these different things and, and including sexual attacks, et cetera, as you're about to see, right? So I'm mad and I'm telling you, okay, if you're gonna attack us, then I'm, I'm uh, finally, I've been holding, 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 and we did, guys, we held for so long. What I love about this is that Jank is panicking. You can see it in his face, you can hear it in the tempo of his voice as he's trying to say there's no quit pro quo. Meanwhile, this is the same guy that said that it was justified to impeach President Trump, 
despite the fact that there was an absence of quid pro quo in that scenario. And even if you're going to argue in the Trump scenario that that did exist and that was valid in the whole Ukraine Biden thing, this is much less ambiguous than that case. Also, I couldn't help but hearing with my amazing ears, Jenk say, if you're going to do this, then we're going to attack you. Listen to that if, that qualifier, that even Jenk, as he's trying to jump and defuse this bomb for Anna Kasparian, couldn't help but put in. So I'm mad and I'm telling you, okay, if you're gonna attack us, then I'm, I'm uh, finally, if you're gonna attack us, 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 because again, there is no reason at all whatsoever for Anna Kasparian to send Jimmy Dore this warning unless it's a threat, a threat to back down. If she was just going to come out with the truth about Jimmy Dore, she should have came out with the truth about Jimmy Dore without any warning. But instead, she sends him this message in order to give him an idea that he might need to back off the Young Turks. And this makes sense because her coming out against Jimmy Dore on a personal level publicly wouldn't be as beneficial as just getting Jimmy to stop because he's really hurting the company. Now, Anna's only defense to this, by the way, is that she got really frustrated and really annoyed, so she sent this message in anger, and she didn't really intend to follow through with the threat. So she says that. So as you can see, already out of the gate, the idea of blackmail is absurd. It's totally absurd. It's not true on the facts as we start. Okay, now let's get to Glenn. Jenk, it is not absurd. It is true based on the facts and you quote mining the last part of the sentence in order to make Anna sound more reasonable, this was all contained in the same message. This was clearly and obviously a threat, specifically aimed at him because she doesn't like the fact that he's out progressiving her. Remember, Anna is better than you. Am I saying that I'm better than you? I guess I'm going a little further than you are. Yeah, I'm fucking better than you. Much better than you. Okay, much better than you. And you are garbage. You are garbage. You're garbage. You're garbage. You see what she did there? Now, since this DM was sent, Jimmy anticipatorily went and showed his audience this threat, which is what this is, that she sent him a threat that she's going to accuse him of sexual harassment. No, that's not what happened at all. And there's no anticipatory anything. Jimmy just came out and admitted that he did it. There's no anticipatory anything. I don't even know what that anticipatory word means. Jimmy just came out and said that he did it. Do you, do you think that's the uh, accurate characterization from the Jimmy Dore video of what he was saying? when he made that response, when he showed the message and he said, Anna is threatening me and I'm going to tell you this story because Anna is threatening me? Or do you think that was Jimmy Dore admitting that he did it and everybody backing Jimmy Dore because they're happy that he did it? Again, Jank cannot be honest. He cannot be a smear artist. It is who he is to his bone. And even when Glenn Greenwald is just stating the facts as they happened, Jank is getting angry. Right? And by the way, some of the things he said in that account were not even true. So Anna wasn't going to say that, okay? And and so she said, if you're saying personal things, I'm allowed to say personal things. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll tell you all the sexual harassment I already did. So instantly, Glenn starts out with a totally wild and incorrect way of, of phrasing it uh, and characterizing it. Again, Jenk, I don't know how dumb you think people on the internet actually are. And by the way, they're probably dumber if they're still watching your show. But this was not about personal things. It is contained in the message, the word harassment. This is talking about Jimmy Dore repeatedly saying how sexy he thought Anna was. Inappropriate comments. This was clearly about sexual harassment, but it didn't explicitly say sexual harassment. Therefore, it was just personal things. She was going to tell you how Jimmy Dore liked his sandwich. She was going to tell you that Jimmy Dore doesn't really know how to eat a medium rare steak. That Jimmy Dore likes a uh, over well done steak with ketchup on it, just like President Trump. That's the personal things that Anna was going to drop. But then Jimmy admitted to the harassment. Do you really expect us to believe that, Jank? Do you really think that that's what was contained? in Anna Kasparian's message, or are you desperate to save one half of your network's major hosting presence because she made a dumb decision because she's a nasty person who constantly makes dumb decisions? He gave his own version of events about what happened. She then went on her own program and made good on her threat. But wait a minute, uh, Jimmy already said he did it. So what do you mean made good on her threat? It's already public for the whole world to see. It, almost every show's talked about it that's in this progressive sphere, unfortunately, right? And I hate that the clip is replayed. Now we're going to have to f replay the clip in a little bit uh, to show you what a liar Glenn Greenwald is, right? 
but she made good on her threat. Okay, but wait, she said that's gonna change. So where's the threat? Where's the part where she says, hey, I don't like your political opinions. If you don't stop, then I will do this. See, Glenn, what you don't understand is that Anna didn't literally say, I am blackmailing you, Jimmy Dore. If Anna doesn't say that she's blackmailing Jimmy Dore, therefore, it's not blackmail of Jimmy Dore. Anna, Cenk Uger, checkmate, Young Turks, best journalist ever. I wonder if Cenk ever, and I mean absolutely ever, gives a Republican this fair of a reading of their quote ever in his life. I'm sure he's never done it. But yeah, because Anna didn't literally say blackmail, because she didn't say, I, Anna Kasparian, and then take a photo of herself signing a contract to her blackmail notice and blackmailing you, Jimmy Dore, that makes it not blackmail. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we all buy that, Cenk. We're, we're all on board with that. Sure, 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 sure. No, Jimmy just goes out and goes, oh, you're going to attack me? I caught feelings. Oh, that's it. Everybody, all my cult, go out and tell everybody I caught feelings, right? So I'll tell you already, I'm a sexual harasser, rah, right? I'm a sexual harasser, rah. I'm a sexual harasser, rah, right? Oh, no, no, no. What, what was that? I'm a sexual harasser, rah. Come on, Jake. What, what are you even doing? I just bail out. Say Anna was drunk and angry and she's sorry. Just, just bail out. Go back in time and undo this. That is not the way to respond. But I'm going to save that clip forever. I have no idea what took place back in 2014 when they were working together because I wasn't there. But here's what I, so I can't comment on whether anyone did anything wrong back then. You have no idea what took place and you can't tell if anyone did anything wrong. All right, well, this is the clip that everyone has already seen. It's inconceivable that Glenn didn't see it. And if he chose not to look at it, well, that would also be absolute negligence if you're a so-called journalist. So he couldn't tell if anybody did anything wrong. Let's watch. I love this tone that Jenk is striking where he's asking questions, but it's like the last word of the sentence that Glenn Greenwald says. He's like, you have no idea what took place? Wow, Glenn, I, I can't trust your journalism ever. You really don't know because you weren't there in 2014? Glenn, 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 wow, wow, wow. Obviously what Glenn Greenwald is saying is that he doesn't know which version of events is accurate between Jimmy Dore and Cenk Uger, and Anna Kasparian, obviously. But Cenk and Anna are doing it. And yes, I misspoke and I'm leaving in the video. That's what he's saying. But Cenk's like, what, you, you didn't hear Jimmy Dore say his side of the, what? Glenn. Are you even a real journalist even? Are you even leaving or hiding in Brazil because you're afraid to re-enter the United States after publishing the Snowden links? Wow, Glenn. Wow. Young Turks. Anna Kasparian used to dress when I worked there uh, unbelievably inappropriately for a newsroom. <laughs> she looked like she was going to a rave. The skirt, one time she came into the newsroom with a skirt so short. It wasn't a pencil skirt. It was like a fluffy one too, but so short that she bent over in front of me and I literally saw her ass and her thong. She's wearing a thong. I literally saw it. Everybody saw it. And I go, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. <laughs> and everybody laughed. Like they laughed louder than I thought they would. And so it humiliated her. She got humiliated in the middle of the newsroom, and I did it. And I did it. Now, Glenn, you said, I have no idea what took place. Well, your friend, the one you're defending and hiding the evidence for, told you he did it, and he told you exactly what took place according to his own account. And you should, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. What am I, a journalist? I don't know. Oh, everybody's already seen the clip. Oh, I don't know what the clip is. I don't have no idea what took place. Again, Glenn Greenwald is not ignoring the existence of Jimmy Dore's statement. He's saying that he doesn't know the distinction between Jimmy and Anna's story, which one is more towards the truth. But I want to get into this next part because this next part is unbelievably amazing because Jenk, without realizing it, is about to contradict Anna Kasparian's story. And and by the way, there's two really important things here. One is, why is he calling it a news skirt? Because the humiliation comes in, you're not a real news person. You're just here for all the men to leer at you. That's why I looked up your skirt and had a big laugh about it. Glenn, you're not sure what happened? You're not sure if, what did he say? Whether anyone did anything wrong back then, you're not sure about it. You're a journalist, and you just saw that. He never put that clip, he never mentioned that clip anywhere in his video. 
He never talked about it. Wow. Hon honestly, wow. I never thought about the impact of Jimmy Dore's statement to Anna Kasparian until Cenk just laid it out like that. The reason Jimmy Dore said nice news skirt, and again, I need to emphasize, news skirt was because he was trying to demean her as a woman saying that she has no place at the news. That's why news skirt, news skirt, news, no place there. Un unbelievable. I, I, I can't believe that I even believed it. Wow. Nice news skirt. But one quick issue with that, uh, that, that little rant that, um, Cenk Uger decided to go off on is, uh, Anna Kasparian, in their previous video, said some things about Jimmy Dore's story were inaccurate. One of the things that she said was inaccurate was the news skirt comment. As I was walking into the studio, because my students were supposed to watch the show, it was their final assignment, watch the show, and there was a written assignment related to the show. And as I was walking in with them, that was when he made the comment, uh, and he didn't make a comment about a news skirt. Uh, he made a comment about how sexy my legs were in front of my students. Why is he calling it a news skirt? He didn't make a comment about a news skirt. So I guess that's an interesting tale from Cenk Uger about what the news skirt meant, what it meant to say news skirt, but the Young Turks have already denied, or Anna Kasparian, the accuser, has already denied this portion of the allegation. So why is Cenk adding this like meaning and talking to you very somberly and looking into the camera and saying, new skirt if anna says that's not what was said think about it my god glenn what else have you hid from your readers all of these years if you're doing a story as a journalist on this and you hide the most important evidence what else have you hidden this is textbook propaganda with the repeating to boot glenn what else have you hidden from your readers you hid the most important evidence glenn what else have you hidden? What else have you hidden? How, how many times did you lie, Glenn? Well, I know that he was a snake when it came to the Sam Harris thing, but you were on the same side as Glenn Greenwald when it came to the Sam Harris thing. What you're upset about now is that you think you need to bail yourself out of a situation, so you're throwing blame and attacking everybody who points out what Anna Kasparian obviously did, and even you have to contradict in order to defend. So... The second part that's important about the Jimmy clip is they're still laughing. This isn't something you did wrong and you apologized for 12 years ago, seven years ago. Oh my God, we shouldn't have said that on air. This is not an on air thing. This is a workplace thing, okay? You do this at a, that is textbook sexual harassment. Anyone who defends that, I don't know what you are, but you're definitely not a progressive. So that's actually not textbook sexual harassment. Harassment has to be ongoing. It could be an incident, an inappropriate incident at the job, but it has to be a pattern of behavior for it to be textbook harassment. That's literally what it says in the textbook. But I love how Jenk ended that, where he's like, I don't know what you are, but you're definitely not progressive. This is still about being more on the left than the other person. That's what this is about. Jenk's about to delve into politics. Again, these are supposedly serious accusations of workplace harassment, but Jenk wants to talk about politics. He wants to out-left Jimmy while virtue signaling about this and misquoting and contradicting Anna Kasparian's account of events. Sure. Not only did you do it back then, you're still having a great time about it. He's laughing, Steph is laughing. Ha 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 ha, we humiliated her. Ha 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 ha, ha ha ha, we humiliated her. Ha 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 ha. What I love about this video is this has all of the over the top Jankisms in there. He has his fake laughter. He has him attributing more malice to people while playing the clips and there's nowhere near that much malice. It's amazing and you can just cut out little gifts of this and throw them out on Twitter on their own because they're hilarious. If anything, she was his boss at the Young Church. And yet, according to her own version of events and according to Jimmy's as well, she never once voiced a complaint about being sexually harassed by Jimmy Dore in the workplace. But wait a minute. Anna wasn't Jimmy's boss at all. So Anna's become executive producer of the show later, but I was Jimmy's boss. So why didn't you, why didn't you check with us? Hey, oh, you're supposed to be a journalist. Hey, did, was Anna the Jimmy's boss at the time? No, you just chose to make up that non-fact.
So what's absolutely great about this is that Jenk Uger is going to stretch this little misstatement from Glenn Greenwald out in order to be something way bigger than it actually is. Because it turns out at the time of this alleged incident, Anna Kasparian was an executive producer at the Young Turks. Now she became an executive producer later and she was in charge of booking and she kept booking Jimmy Dore when she was in charge of booking. And as an executive producer, she kept having Jimmy Dore on her show. And if you go watch Jimmy Dore's original video on this subject matter, this is what Jimmy Dore says in his account. She never, in the course of this seven years, uttered a peep about claiming to have been sexually harassed by Jimmy Dore. In fact, in 2016, as I just showed you, they had a very amicable exchange. She was, he was wishing her well on her mother's surgery and she said, thank you so much. And it's so great to see how much you're kicking ass. That's not the exchange that one would expect from someone who actually feels like they were maliciously and systematically sexually harassed by someone else, but maybe it is. Maybe that did happen. Okay, so we played a clip there of, of Glenn continuing. I'll get back to the Jimmy clip in a second. But in that Glenn clip right there, he says, maybe it happened. Maybe. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He said, in all these years, she never uttered a peep. Guys, you've seen sexual harassment stories. It's number one go-to maneuver of people defending sexual harassers. Why didn't she come out before? He does the standard caveats in the, in the video. I'll, I'll be way more fair than him. So in the video, he says a couple of times, yeah, it happens with women. Sometimes it happens with women that they don't say anything about sexual harassment, they come out later. But in the case of Anna, maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. What do I do? Would I watch it? No, I didn't watch it. I'll be way more fair than him. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. What do I do? Would I watch it? No, I didn't watch it. So what I love about this is Jenks like, I'm gonna be way more fair than them. I'm gonna be so much more fair. I mean, I'm telling you that you can't trust any of Glenn Greenwald's stories, past, present, and future, but I'm gonna be totally fair. And then within a few seconds, Jenk is already calling him a victim blamer and going to emotional appeals when obviously what Glenn Greenwald is asserting is that Anna is not the victim. Anna is an abuser in this situation and she's weaponizing an incident that happened at the Young Turks about seven or eight years ago in order to get back at Jimmy now due to the fact that he's attacking them on air. So Jenk's like, I'm gonna be so fair, but I'm not. Listen to this next one though. That fact that someone doesn't come forward doesn't mean nothing happened, but... What she's doing here is as grotesque as it is transparent. So it doesn't mean that it didn't happen, but you see that, but she's grotesque. Jimmy is not grotesque for all the things that you saw. Anna's grotesque. Again, Jenk cannot quote somebody accurately, even when he's playing the tape. Obviously what Glenn Greenwald was saying is just because you don't come out immediately doesn't mean that didn't happen in all scenarios. However, based on the context in which this came out, the context of the direct message to Jimmy Dore, he thinks that this did not happen. Therefore, Anna Kasparian is grotesque for using these tactics against Jimmy Dore. However, Jenks saying that Glenn Greenwald is accepting that it happened, but he said he's denying it in other parts of the video, but he's saying Anna is grotesque because he wants to blame the victim. This is textbook blaming the victim. Textbook. It's textbook victim blaming. I opened up the textbook and it said this was victim blaming with the textbook. I, I 100%. L let's get let's get back into the other video. It's basically blackmailing him, saying if you continue to criticize us, I'm going to accuse you of sexual harassment. I already showed you that it, it was no such thing. Uh, but Glenn, you're supposed to be a lawyer, and I get it. You're no longer a journalist, you're an advocate, and you've decided that you're gonna advocate for this monster, Jimmy Dore. I don't know why you made that decision, I don't care, because I have no respect for you left at all, okay? But you're, you're a lawyer and you're doing a, a, an interesting job of advocating here. You don't know that blackmail is a very serious criminal charge, and you just said that on tape? With no evidence at all. I love how Jenk is like, Glenn, you used to be a lawyer. Jenk, first of all, you used to be a lawyer. And he's trying to go in on the specific legal definition of blackmail, which is actually going to be the legal definition of extortion because blackmail is a colloquial term. I don't believe it's actually the legal term for that. You're extorting them based on information. And that's what makes blackmail a crime. Now, Anna's not extorting money or extorting value from him. She's trying to get him to shut up in order to defend the Young Turks. There's also probably no criminal intent in this. She was just saying, Jimmy, you've been attacking us. I'm coming for you because you're attacking us. And the implication there is stop attacking us. In fact, you hid the evidence of the actual sexual harassment from your audience. You see, if you're in his audience and you're a reader, understand 
from now on, you have no idea what Glenn didn't tell you. The over overwhelming evidence that might be on the other side, but Glenn wasn't advocating for that position. He wanted to advocate for his own opinions and his perspective. And in this case, he wanted to say, well, sexual harassment, is it really that bad? I mean, but, but the victim is grotesque. The victim is grotesque. You just saw it with your own eyes. Again, remember, not 10 minutes earlier in this video, Jenk said he's going to be more fair than any of these other people. And now he's outright saying that Glenn Greenwald supports sexual harassment. He's not characterizing this as Glenn Greenwald not believing Anna's account of events, which is actually what's being said by Glenn Greenwald. It's Glenn Greenwald supporting sexual harassment and saying that the victim, because they are a victim, is grotesque. That's what Jenk is trying to emphasize. This guy who literally, again, less than 10 minutes earlier in this video, said he was going to be fairer than these other people. Unbelievable. Jenk cannot go without smearing people. That's all he can do. He is a smear artist. That's his only skill. That's what the Young Turks are known for. So the people that you should never trust again are the Young Turks because Jenk, in a story where he's playing you clips that contradict what he's saying, is making stuff up and attributing extra malice to the people he's talking about. By the way, uh, there are really grotesque people in the world. There's like little Nazis in the world. Uh, they write at the Daily Stormer. Um, so, interestingly enough, uh, they also wrote about this story. Can we put it up on the screen here? Um, I'm sorry that you, I, we have to subject you to the headline above that as well, but remember, these are literal Nazis. Okay, so this is actually the part of the video that bothered me the most, because this is the low-key, the most deceptive part of the video. When Jenk says, I'm sorry I had to subject you to that headline there, he is absolutely 100% lying to you. They left that in on purpose. It is so unbelievably easy in editing software to get rid of something like that, that this had to be done intentional. There are multiple different ways. For instance, if you're using a Mac computer, you can do a screenshot where you draw out the parameters of what you want to capture. It's Command Shift 4. Really easy to do. I do it all the time to edit a video whenever I'm looking for stills. But also, if you have something that you don't like, and this happens to me when there's ads that pop up on the side or in view, another thing you can do is easily pull this slider down and crop the image. This is so unbelievably easy. I do it myself in my own editing. You think the Young Turks editors couldn't do this themselves? Um, I'm sorry that you, I, we have to subject you to the headline above that as well, but remember, these are literal Nazis. So now that you know that this is a lie, Cenk either had his editor screen grab this for the graphic, exactly how he said to include that part, or told them not to crop it out. Again, two easy solutions that take a split second in order to do. Think about Cenk telling you, I'm sorry that you have to see that, when you know for a fact he intentionally put that in there. So he has that part in there to smear Jimmy Dore. He's like, this is the guilt by association but he's apologizing for it so he can seem virtuous, even though the only reason you are seeing it is because of an intentional choice made at the Young Turks. Think about that. Again, sometimes it's the smallest things that show you how deceptive a person is, and this is an A-plus perfect example of that. Jenk, this is an unabashed lie. Even if everything else in your video were true, this would be an obvious lie to anybody who's ever looked at an image on the internet or used any crop function ever. And they run with the headline, Anna Kasparian blackmailing Jimmy Dore with Me Too hoax. Hoax, hoax. You saw it on tape for exposing the Young Turks pro-war agenda. And also don't have a pro-war agenda. Every part of this story is uh, a lie. Okay, now, just because the Nazis agree with Glenn and Jimmy, and by the way, other people, it doesn't mean that Glenn and Jimmy are Nazis. We're fair. You look, Hitler was a vegetarian. Uh, that doesn't mean vegetarians are Nazis, right? But when the Nazis agree with you, you should probably quadruple check your position. Did Glenn look like he quadruple checked his position? No, no. We're fair. Just because the Nazis are on your side, uh, remember Hitler was a vegetarian. I mean, you're like a vegetarian like Hitler, like Adolf Hitler, who I'm mentioning for some weird reason. That doesn't mean that 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 that's fine. That's that's gonna be totally different. But we just want you to quadruple check. Also, Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Nazis, Nazis agree with Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald, Nazis, Nazis, Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald. I'm sorry about this headline that I deliberately included in here. Let me staple it on my forehead. I'm so sorry. There's nothing we can do. There was no way to fix this in post. Uh, after. Uh Jimmy's side put out all these old tapes of ours. 
some of the worst alt-right people like Cernovich jumped in and started spreading them around. And get a load of the alt-right and the alt-left meeting, okay? I mean, this thing has come full circle. Because the original guy who leaked uh, blogs and tapes about me when I formed Justice Democrats was Mike Cernovich. So he's also the pizza gay guy. So pizza gate, Seth Rich conspiracy theory. So all of this is now beginning to make a lot of sense. So the, uh, and you just heard me call Jimmy uh, alt left. And I decided that actually is, you know, a pretty good term for them because they live in an alternate reality. So now, Jenk, in order to hammer the point home that he's calling Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald Nazis, comes up with this term, which, by the way, I don't think he came up with it. I actually think Trump or somebody on the right came up with it called alt left in order to describe Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald. And the only reason the alt-left as a term is significant is because the alt-right exists. That's why he named Mike Cernovich, somebody he's labeling an alt-writer. I don't know enough to know that's true, but judging by Cenk, he probably could be lying. He named him so that he could tie the alt-left to the alt-right. And he says full circle, even though what he's trying to say is like the horseshoe theory. But again, Cenk, not very smart. So the only reason he's calling them all left is to link them to the alt right. The only reason he showed you that and didn't cut out that portion that he apologized for is because he wants you to think that these are the people largely who are supporting Jimmy Dore and Glenn Greenwald. That's who Jank is. He is lying to you right now and trying to smear his opponents as Nazis because Anna Kasparian sent a threatening DM to a former employee. So they've easily earned that title of the alt left. Uh, and by the way, if you want to be in there and you want to be, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 those things don't matter. The only thing that matters is the cult of Jimmy Dore, which I can't believe Glenn Greenwald has joined. Jesus, Glenn, you have no self-respect at all. A lot of people have lost their self-respect in this fight. It's really sad to see. This whole blackmail thing, I'm going to come back to that because... Because some people who used to be good, smart people have been duped by that too. He's talking about Kyle Kalinske right there. Again, if you want me to talk about Kyle Kalinske's video and the response to that, we'll go over that. But save that for another one. Again, arbitrary number of likes in the description. Um, so apparently this was a state secret and Anna was going to threaten to reveal it unless Jimmy didn't, unless Jimmy did the things that she wanted. Now, she didn't write any of that. You saw it with your own eyes. But not only that, apparently Jimmy had already revealed it. This is December of 2020, okay? So this state secret that apparently that was gonna get blackmailed, et cetera, Jimmy had already admitted, watch. One time I was in a news studio and I won't say who did this, but someone wore <laughs> such a short. <laughs> no, <laughs> anyway. You gave me a dirty look last week when I mentioned that. I thought it was funny. I'm just saying, I've seen, I've seen newscasters naked asses in, uh, in newsrooms. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying who's. <laughs> I think, I think, what is it, a nice news skirt? Yes, a nice news skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, the only thing worse than a nice news skirt is a nice news thong. A news thong. <laughs> <laughs> it's a news bikini. <laughs> I'm doing the news in my news thong. <laughs> and by the way, they were talking about Anna when they went into that spiel, okay? Um, and so it was not unclear who he was referring to. It wasn't any random person at TYT, right? They were talking about Anna, and then they say all that. So what's great about Jank is that he does not know what he's doing. Anna Kasparian contests the new skirt clip. Now, all of a sudden, you have a clip of Jimmy Dore pre-Anna's attempt at blackmail talking about it and using the same joke. Also, the female that works there, and I believe it's Jimmy Dore's wife, mentions the new skirt and the news thong, which is exactly what was in Jimmy Dore's story. So Jimmy obviously told that story to his wife at some period of time, well before Anna Kasparian sent Jimmy Dore the blackmail message. Anna contests that specifically, but it's something that Jimmy remembers so strongly that he told to multiple different people in his life. And he told it on air months before Anna Kasparian's attempted blackmail. Jenk, you just played yourself, you just proved yourself wrong, you just proved Anna to be a liar by showing that clip. Maybe don't go after everything and try to unearth everything if you're on the wrong side of the issue. If he's only talking about politics, why is he already trying to humiliate her? And as you see here, again, this is not a long time ago, this is now, and they're having the time of their life. 
<laughs> like she's doing news. Nah, we're going to attack her and pretend that she's this and that and that she's here for our sexual amusement. You people sicken me. You people sicken me. I love Jenk's body language throughout all of this. Jenk is sickened. You sickened me. Like, this is not a normal way to present the news, Jenk. What are you doing? Do you think that emphasis, that emotion, I'm going to buy into it? It's just phony emotion. I could do it on this channel all the time. I am disgusted by this. <laughs> by the way, let me just note for the record, I feel sick about all of this because I saw Jimmy during the break sometimes and I thought this is just some rapport they had or something, not just with the Ron Placones of the world, but with Steph. Yell at her that he didn't, that she didn't yell at his, that she didn't laugh at his jokes enough. And we've all seen it, the stage crew saw it, we all saw it, okay? Why didn't you laugh at my joke? People won't think it's funny if you don't laugh at it. Well, maybe it wasn't funny, Jimmy. And by the way, you'll see it going forward. The fake laughs, this is filled with nonstop fake laughs because Jimmy psychologically abuses these people. And that's why I'm mad at myself. You know, you see that? I, I should have fired him right away. That's not a firing offense, but I, I should have known. That's a bad guy. That's a bad guy. This is so good because Jenk is saying that Jimmy Dore would demand that other people during the breaks laugh at his jokes so that people would think that Jimmy is funny. What's excellent about this is that when Jenk brought Jimmy Dore aboard, he introduced him as somebody that Jenk personally thinks is the funniest guy. Now all of a sudden Jenk's like, maybe your jokes weren't that funny. Jenk, you hired him because you thought he was funny. That's what you said on air. And all of a sudden, well, maybe, maybe it wasn't funny. Uh, I'm Jenk Uger. C I mean, come on. Now, d does Jimmy Dore maybe have a big ego like that? And he's like, you know, like I want I'm doing comedy. I want laughs, whatever. Maybe, but is Jenk stretching this to psychological abuse? Oh, that's a bad guy. That's a bad guy. Jimmy could have easily been a prima donna, but that doesn't mean he's emotionally abusing the people around him. You hired an entertainer from the entertainment industry, and now you're saying that they acted too much like they're from the entertainment industry. You should have fired him right away because he's not funny. Maybe his jokes weren't funny, even though when you hired him, you said he was like the funniest comedian and you loved him, everything about him. It was like a kissing love affair. Ridiculous, Jenk. And did you laugh all the times that you laughed on air because Jimmy Dore said, you better laugh at my jokes or are you just weird? What 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 even is going on even that we're at this level? I mentioned earlier, Glenn's become a right winger. And you say, well, no, no, no. Or, or maybe he just doesn't believe in sexual harassment at large. Now he says, oh, sometimes it happens, sometimes, I guess. But listen, what does he have to hear about an unrelated case? Look what they did to Brett Kavanaugh with no evidence. There was no evidence in the Brett Kavanaugh case. We all saw it. Glenn, what's wrong with you? But that lie doesn't even make any sense. We all saw it on national television. You saw Christine Blasey Ford. You saw her recounted. You saw the whole thing. We covered the test. Everybody covered the testimony. But apparently now Glenn is, thinks, no, there's no evidence against poor Brett Kavanaugh. Now you're beginning to get a sense of what happened to Glenn. OK, it's not me. It's him. He's saying it. So what I absolutely love about this is that Jenk has imagined in his mind that there was anything more than allegations against Brett Kavanaugh. Remember, Blasey Ford didn't have a date. She didn't really have a location. Her best friend, that's still her best friend to this day, said that she did not remember the party, and there was a news report about how she was going to say that to the media, but she got pressured by Blasey Ford's friends and her current friends into not saying anything because she didn't want to publicly not back the account. So Jenks like, there was tons of evidence on the sweat they tricked, pl plenty of evidence every, every, everywhere. We covered the testimony. By the way, anything come of that? Where is Christine Blasey Ford? Anywhere? Bueller? Anywhere? What Anna Kasparian did here with that little message, I've not said this about you, I've kept it to myself, but now that you're criticizing us, that's all going to change. That is grotesque. That is ethically repugnant. But it is also commonplace in liberal left politics commonplace in liberal left politics. So apparently we're all guilty. Brett Kavanaugh is innocent, Jimmy Dore is innocent, but Anna is grotesque and morally repugnant. By the way, I am not surprised that this is common in left-wing circles, that people will throw out accusations in order to smear their reputation. Remember, the left wing has inserted politics in the place of religion. So anybody who is against you politically is a heretic. And by the way, this is true of Jimmy Dore and Cenk Uger. And if you want to take somebody out who is against your religion, you try to ostracize them. You try to excommunicate them. We've seen story after story of this happening. Also, very important to note, Jank, who says he's being as fair as possible, 
that Glenn Greenwald did not say Kavanaugh was innocent. He said that there was no evidence because there was no evidence presented. It was a he said, she said. So apparently we're all guilty. Brett Kavanaugh is innocent, Jimmy Dore is innocent, but Anna is grotesque and morally repugnant. Also important for the Jimmy Dore case, he said he didn't know which version of events to believe because he wasn't there. Completely different from saying that they're all innocent and everybody on the left is guilty. He said this is common among left-wing circles. This is a bully tactic. By the way, this has happened multiple different times in multiple different cases. We've covered them on this channel. But Jenk, again, to the very end of the video, cannot characterize a single sentence accurately. Guys, you all get to make a choice here. And if you say, yeah, I agree with Glenn, go have at it, Hoss. But it says something about you if you can't tell who's the morally repugn repugnant one in this story. By the way, again, with the cheese grotesque, go ahead. Yeah, it does say something about you if you can't tell who's morally repugnant in this story. It is Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uger. Now, Jimmy Dore, as I've said multiple different times on the channel, I'm not a fan of. I think that if you're one of these conservatives who's like, Jimmy Dore texts the Democratic establishment, therefore he's good, therefore he's the real liberal, you're insane. Jimmy Dore is even further left than the Young Turks. He's even more crazy. The reason he was on the right side of the Russiagate story is because he's one of the progressives that thinks that Russia is a force for good and America is a force for evil. Jimmy Dore has had guests on his show that have told him, and he's believed it, lapped it up, even though they're Chinese propagandists, that the Chinese Communist Party has cured homelessness and poverty in their nation. Jimmy Dore is that kind of leftist. He's in the Blame America crowd. Again, this is a dispute between the Blame America crowd most of the time and Jimmy Dore's Blame America crowd all of the time. Okay, last thing is this, guys. People change. And so, God knows I've changed. So when Cernovich found those old blogs and people go back to old videos and stuff, I cringe at that, that stuff. And I've apologized for it, by the way, probably now with the original Justice Democrat controversy with when I ran for office and now, I've probably apologized dozens of times for it. You know why? Because, and, and I deleted those blogs 15 years ago. Why? Because I don't believe it anymore. And that's embarrassing. And I wish I hadn't said that. See, see how easy it is to say that, right? And I hope that I've changed for the better, right? I don't know if Jimmy was always this way, and I, now I'm worried that he was, right? And I didn't see it. Uh, Glenn, I thought, was a great journalist. And either he wasn't, and all those old stories, I have no idea what he hid and didn't hide, right? Um, or he changed. Now, it's up to you guys again, one last time, to make the decision. Who changed for the better? Who changed for the worse? So Jen closes this out with an emotional appeal. He's just repeating the same information, which is causing me to have to repeat the same information. But I like that part where he almost gets to tears. He talks about how, I'd like to believe that I've, I've changed, that I'm different. Glenn, we're... <laughs> All right, so that wraps up my breakdown of Jang Uger going after Glenn Greenwald. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you want to see more, like the video, get the watch time up, subscribe, follow me on the social medias linked in the description. Check out my appearance on Tim Pool's podcast where I talked about this a little bit. You guys know the drill. Till next time.